Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today in War Thunder it's time to have a look at another changelog. This came out today and it is quite important. The new calculation of armor penetration has now come in. So basically they're using the Demar formula and or the formulae I should say and also the Lance Odomad formulae. And uh, the thing is there has been a lot of debate, a lot of discussion whether you know they should use these formula because they don't take into account certain statistics and also on top of this you know what about nations that already Already have their full data. Um, for me, I think it's much better from a gameplay point of view just to have a standardized system across the board uh, because of the fact that testing was not standardized in real life. It's kind of as simple as that. But if you want to um, actually have a look at uh, the formulae uh, themselves, I have done two videos looking through them. One, which was this one, uh, looking through this, uh, which I did maybe about a week ago at this point, and then also uh, one one I did on the Q&A, uh, which came out a little bit earlier. Uh, where is it? This one, the Ballistic Update, Questions and Answers for Developers. I go through my opinions on it. Is it better? Is it worse? So on and so forth. And for me, I generally think it is a positive change. Now, unfortunately, there has been a few negative things that have come out of it. And uh, it's kind of sad to see, really. And it's the, some of the first ground vehicles... Uh, that have been deleted from the main research tree. I can't remember a time before where a ground vehicle has been has been taken out of a research tree. I can think of many aircraft, uh, but I cannot think of any ground vehicles, and that kind of makes me sad uh, in a way, you know, because it is. Uh, it, it is odd that when you think about it in the future, when a new person starts the game, they will not be able to get access to these. Just like how, like with um, the vehicles such as in the USSR, where uh, in the aviation tree, you have some SB2Ms people will never be able to touch. You have in the German tree a bunch of Italian vehicles, such as all of these SM79s, that nobody will ever be able to touch. Same with the rare vehicles. But in you know, with the rare vehicles, at least we have the market now. At least we have uh, at least we have the market. Uh, at least we have uh, the uh, the box system from the war bond shop. You know, they are at least making a comeback in some ways. But these hidden vehicles and never have never made a comeback I personally think we should have a war bond box which has these certain vehicles in it especially now that we have even more that have been quote-unquote deleted from the game so uh, the way it works uh, when it comes to these vehicles is they've been removed from their main research tree and uh, the vehicles still remain for the players who have it and since uh, two out of the three were reserve vehicles everybody technically should have had them but if you're starting the game tomorrow you will never see these vehicles and that is the problem. So let's uh, go through them. Uh, before we get into the formula stuff. Actually, no, let's do the formula stuff first. So, uh, one thing that has been noted uh, over today is that the obviously the stat cards are not matching up with certain values. It seems like some stat cards are actually changing on the fly over time while people are in-game, and therefore cannot be trusted as usual. On top of this, uh, there, are, there seem to be some vehicles that have massively benefited from this new system. There are other vehicles that have uh, not, and uh, from that, we're going to have to uh and we're going to have to after a few months like they always do do some br changes and maybe some repair cost changes but the majority of uh, the top tier vehicles it looks like the apf sds overall has uh, reduced uh, most most of the time and i think this is a good thing uh before we had a lot of rounds where you could just look at a tank and just shoot and uh, be able to do a lot of critical damage to it i like the idea of people aiming uh, I like the idea of uh, skill being involved, and therefore I'm fine with them losing a bit of penetration. There's also a lot of rounds now where they're zero degree. Like a, a good example, uh, which was uh, not... What's going on here? All right. <laughs> which was... Um, which was not similar... Uh, which was not the same before was uh, something like the T-3485, right? So this is a good example. The T-3485 has the BS-365K and the BS-365A uh, round. Now, the zero-degree pen between this round and this round was very close, 
But the reason why you take the 365A is because you have increased pen at 30 and 60, so dealing with stuff like jumbos, dealing with stuff uh, such as uh, panthers, makes it a little bit easier, right? Now you have the APCR with more pen. Uh, at uh, angles of everything uh, when it comes to 0 to 30 apart from 60. So now you've got to make the choice. Do you want to do this at 0 degrees, right? Uh, or if you're facing a lot of flat tanks, do you want to take this round? Or do you want to take this round when uh, you're facing 30 degrees or more? And that's the thing. So in a lot of cases, it's made it that you have to make a decision on which round to use, you know, in a given situation. In other uh, places, it has meant that one round rules them all. So we pretty much just changed around a lot of the main rounds of uh, vehicles. And, you know, I'm fine with that. Uh, we'll have to see, as I said, it is too early to tell which vehicles have massively benefited, apart from the i7, that's very obvious, uh, but um, it's very hard to tell which ones are amazing, you know, which ones are not so good, and I'm sure after a few months we're going to get a set of BR changes uh, which will reflect these new changes in the game. They have said that uh, with the, uh, you know, the dev Q&A that they did, that if changes need to be made, they will make them uh, when it comes to BRs and stuff like that with the changes in the rounds. Uh, on top of this, there is another thing to think about. Um, this opens up new doors for shells which weren't fully tested. Uh, so you may find a bunch of vehicles uh, which actually have, uh, or a bunch of guns which have access to new rounds now uh, because of using this standardized system, which could be cool to see in the future, which uh, had, had them, or at least tested them historically, but we don't have full data on them. Now, also uh, another thing to uh, uh, another thing to talk about is uh, I saw a lot of people saying that they weren't using the right slope effect values uh, for the formulae, and well, now they are. Uh, it's as simple as that. Uh, I said, uh, you know, just wait. The system isn't out yet. Let's just uh, see what happens uh, when it comes to this. And obviously, I talked to a few people about it, and um, they said that, you know, uh, they are the wrong values. They will fix them. And therefore, I didn't really bring them up because I knew it was going to get changed. And as we see from this, it has been changed and it has been corrected. So let's talk about the vehicles that have been taken out of the trees. We have the H35, the FCM. 36 for the French, so if you don't know what these two are, uh, let's go over to France. These were two vehicles which even before uh, this uh, uh, hit to their armor penetration were absolutely awful. And uh, same with the H39, but the H39 is slightly better because it has the better gun. The reason why the H35 and the FCM are absolutely awful is uh, the fact that they have this SA-18 gun, right? And everything else at Tier 1 has the SA-38, as you can see, or the SA-34. Whereas this has the SA-18. And because of this, these two donkey machines could hardly pen anything in the game. And at 1.0, or reserved tier, what happens is you run into a lot of stuff with autocannons which can easily pen you. When you compare that the H-35 and the FCM-36 are 1.0, and you look at something like a Panzer II C, which is also 1.0, and you see that it has this HVAB belt, which pens 64 millimeters, right? They're gonna go through you like butter, and you will struggle to pen them. And with these new penetration changes, what happened to the H35 is the fact that the APCR stayed pretty similar, you know, 36 millimeters of pen, it was still awful, right? Uh, it was awful before, it is awful now, but what has changed is this. The APHE, which is a researchable modification, may I just say, 13 millimeters worth of pen. This round is useless. And you have to pay for it, which is even more useless. I mean, now that they've taken it out of the tech tree, you know, it's not that much of an issue because, you know, nobody was using it before, so nobody will use it now. It'll just be a nice rare for people. But once again, it's kind of annoying that uh, people will not have access to this when they actually get into the game. I'd rather this be put in a box or maybe put on the, the market, just something, so people could have access to it if they want it. Uh, but yeah, uh, this round is <laughs> basically the reason why 
these were taken out of the tree. It's absolutely useless. So therefore, you're stuck with APCR, which already doesn't pen a lot, right? And uh, it's not like these are fast. It's not like these are well armored. They get killed by pretty much everything <laughs> at their tier, showing why they were taking out the tree. I personally would have never put them in in the first place because it's not like this change, you know, makes um, a huge difference to these vehicles. They're still awful. They were awful before. They were awful now. I even make a joke with this thing, Pyramid Head here, the FCM 36, that it was much more effective when I was grinding it out to use it it as a battering ram instead of using it as a tank because of the spud gun that it has here and also because of the fact that this gun shield is only 20 millimeters so therefore you can just shoot straight through it not well no bueno as we say so yeah uh, the reason they're taken out is because of the spud gun uh, the spud gun is just absolutely abysmal and uh it's as i said a nice rare for people to have it's a uh, a vehicle which we've uh, uh, has now been taken out of the game, and you can understand why. But I hope in the future they are available to new players who will have never been able to see them, even though they are useless. They're still part of the game. They're still the first discarded tanks uh, of ground forces. You know when it comes to actually being taken out of trees. Uh, the Hargo is the other one, so uh, before we get on though, the H-39 has been moved to reserve vehicles, so for France, uh, obviously, if you take out a reserve, you need to put in a reserve, so they just moved this down, this was here before, and the H-35 was here, so they've just moved it down, nothing really crazy, and then for the Japanese, the Japanese have also lost the vehicle, the Hargo. Now, what is interesting is they've taken out, or deleted, as they say, uh, from the main research tree, the Hargo, uh, but they've left the Hargo Commander, uh, which was a special vehicle you could get, I believe, at Christmas when the Japanese came out. Uh, but then again, you know, no new player once again is going to see it. So this is another vehicle that new players will never see uh, in their tech trees. And the Hargo is a little bit more egregious than the French ones. The Hargo was one of the most produced Japanese tanks uh, ever, or at least around the time period, and it does have a lot of history behind it. Yes, it may be completely useless in game, uh, but it does have a ton of, uh, you know, it, it does have a ton of history. It was used a lot, therefore it, it should have at least a place in the game, even though it really isn't very good, because it only has this APHE shell, which pens 30 because of this new system. Yes, that is the main issue here. It also has two, well, it has this camo, and I believe I've unlocked that camo, yeah. So, uh, I suppose the... I suppose the challenge now, if you have these vehicles, is to spade them, uh, because they are useless <laughs> when it comes to their pen. But you can still pen some areas like this. Uh, the, the gun on the Hargo can still pen the Hargo. Right, so there will be vehicles you can pen with the 30 millimeters of penetration. It just there's a lot of vehicles around this BR that can just look at you and kill you, which is the problem. But it's it's sad to see it, as I said, out of the main tech tree. I understand why they've done it uh, because of the fact that uh, its gun is really not very good, and for a new player experience, if the, the, see the, this is this is the justification I can think of of taking them out, right? If you are a new player, let's say you're a weeb, and you really like Japan, you really like the ground forces of Japan, and you decide, as a weeb, or just as somebody who likes Japanese stuff, or maybe you just want to try their tech tree first, you go into the game, you open up their tech tree, and you start playing, and uh, your first vehicle that you use is this. You get instantly put off the game. Uh, because you wonder why you can't pen anything, and uh, you just close the game and move on, and move to a different game. Uh, and the same thing goes for the French tanks as well, since these were very early on tanks uh, in in the tech tree. You know, you don't want people coming, you know, really liking their baguettes, and really liking their uh, champagne, and all of this stuff, and they come into the game, and then they're like, what the hell is this, you know? I've read about the B1 Bis, I've read about uh, these crazy machines, I've read about these pretty cool vehicles, the RL44, what is this spud bucket, you know? So, 
That's something you've got to think about. That's the reason why I can see they took it out. So the Keeney has been moved to reserve uh, to keep up the idea of having two reserve vehicles, just like we had to do with the H-39. Then, uh, instead of taking out the Igo Co, the Chiha, and the Type 95, they have just given them heat shells uh, by default. So this is very uh, key. Now, instead of uh, the Chiha, oh, go away, the Chiha and the Igo, which are right here, instead of just taking them out too, because their APHE is also this is, this APHE is worse than the Hargos, right? The Hargos at least has 30, right? This Igo here, Igo Co, has 20. <laughs> but they've given them heat for a default shell. Uh, and uh, the 57mm Pens 55. So that brings it in line with, you know, some of the better reserve vehicles. And then the Chi Ha also gets the 55 after having that 21 millimeters and they've they had to give it as default can you imagine if you had to grind out this round my god you you would the only way you would be able to get any research in uh, this the chiha or especially this monstrosity the ego co would be to try and get to a cap sit on it and cap or just get shot and hope eventually that you research the round. So, thank God they gave it, you know, a stock, <laughs> because otherwise it would be pretty bad. But you get high muzzle velocity, you get more explosive mass, uh, you also get more penetration, which is the main thing. It pretty much means that these are useful, uh, instead of being stuck with the APHE. Otherwise, we would have a bunch of other vehicles that would be taken out of the game. The last one is the Type 70, type 95. And you might be wondering, well, you don't see a Type 95 here. Well, the Rogo is the Type 95. The Type 95 Rogo It's this massive monstrosity. And uh, it has a 70mm on it and a 37 And uh, the 70mm only has 20mm of pen on its APHE. So they gave it the heat. It's got 76mm. But it has 200 meters per second of muzzle velocity, so that is something to take into account. Uh, but at least the Rogo is still useful. Now, um, one of the things is I think the Rogo is actually one of the least used vehicles in the game, but they obviously can't take it out because it's a premium. People have paid GE for it. And on top of this, the addition of heat makes it a lot more appealing, at least for me, uh, compared to a lot of other rank 1 vehicles. The good thing about it is its survivability, even though most people are very close in it, and there is a very much lack of armor, but it is kind of fun just running around in these rank 1 battleships, and now that it has its heat, it is obviously better. So those are the changes to uh, Japan at rank 1, and now there's a few for America as well. So, the M22 has actually been moved to the first rank and is placed now after the LVTA1. So, if we actually have a look here, it's placed here. I'll just repair stuff so everything's good. I also need to purchase that thing. There we go. Wunderbar. So, the M22 is now placed here between the LVTA1 and the M8 HMC. I have no idea why they put it here or why they moved it from here. Um, I my guess is that it's now not as good at uh, being up tiered, uh, because its research is going to be worse. But something that I checked, you know, you could see I had to repair some vehicles. I I did a battle in the M22 because I wanted to see if they'd taken away its scouting because. Uh, you know, we, we have a bunch of light tanks at rank 1, but none of them have scouting. And when this got moved to rank 1, it still has its airstrike, it still has its improved optics modification. So I took it out in a realistic battle. The M22 still has scouting. So the M22 now is our first rank 1 scout vehicle. At least for now. Uh, you know, this could change uh, in the future. But the M22 has the crowning role of being our first tank at rank 1 that can scout. Isn't that wonderful? So, yeah, uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's been moved to rank 1. And the other machines, uh, the M3 Lee and the M8 HMC, so this machine right here, the one with the chode gun, the 75mm, 
uh, which is actually really fun to play. If you want to talk about low muzzle velocities, do I have a trick for you? You know, 304 meters per second, 381. These are pretty low as well. Very fun to use, though, uh, the M8 HMC. And also the M3 Lee, which used to be rank 1 and now is rank 2. So now I think at rank 1, uh, the Soviet T-50 is alone as being the highest vehicle uh, BR-wise in rank 1. And yes, it is. So the T-50, this machine, and also the M3 medium, which is still a rank 1, <laughs> even though the M3 in the US tree is now rank 2, along with the Grand. See, the, this, this is what's confusing, right? So the Grand was always a rank 2. The M3 Lee is now a rank 2. Uh, the British Grand is a rank 2. But the Soviet one, the rare M3 medium, is still a rank 1. So that needs to be changed. But uh, the T50 now is the highest BR rank 1 vehicle in the game. There is nothing else anymore that is a 2.7 that I can find. Apart from, obviously, the M8, A1, but that is not a standard Tech Tree vehicle. So congratulations to the T50 at uh, now holding that pinnacle. On top of this, the M22 being the first vehicle in the game at rank 1 with scouting is kind of interesting. Hopefully, they do make a lot of rank 1 vehicles have scouting. Uh, especially the ones which have lower penetration now, so you can actually, you know, get used to the mechanic if you're a beginner. And on top of this, it would be a lot more fun. Uh, you know, you don't always have to rely on your gun. There's a different playstyle there. And moving up the M3 Lee and the M8, I mean, they've moved up the M8 just to swap with the M22. And the M3, it makes sense with its BR and also with the Grants at a higher, you know, the higher rank. Uh, we hopefully... Uh, we'll see now a lot of BR changes, as I said, in the future when it comes to these new penetration statistics. And if not, there is going to be a few vehicles that rule the roost. I'm not going to go into my... Uh, I'm not going to go into some of the ones which I personally think are kind of crazy at their BR. I mean, one of them is the AMX-13 DCA-40. It now has 90 millimeters of pen, but this thing was always ridiculous at uh, 4.7. It should always be higher. If you look at all the other 4.7s, uh, AA, the AMX-13 DCA-40, is well better than all of them in the game. But anyway, uh, hopefully over the next period of time, the month or so, we'll get a bunch of BR changes and... You know, it'll be good. Uh, otherwise, we may have a few issues. And I just wanted to share a last picture. Look at this lady with her Cornish pasty. She definitely looks confused, smiling, and also some interesting glasses on her. But yes, go and eat a Cornish pasty. They're a wonderful, wonderful treat. I'll see you all next time.